pie, it's not good. You catch things. Yeah, yeah, it's worse, it's worse. Um, <laughs> the Ramban wants to know why the uh, Mishpatim, which is this week's Pasha, with all many, many mitzvot, the first one that's mentioned is talking about a servant, a, 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 a Hebrew slave. How come that is the first mitzvah? Yes. Number one. Then he says there is a very uh, special, special, special Ramban, which I have learned already a few times, called Zobeyat wa Elohim Yecherab. Do you know that expression? One who sacrifices to God shall be destroyed. Twenty-first. You are coming. You. What? Your your birthday? Ah, oh, your birthday. It was. It was. Yes. Shabbat. Shabbat. English birthday. Yes. The Hebrew birthday was already in Hey Shabbat, the fifth day of Shabbat, which is two weeks ago or so. Um. Um. You will be around this Shabbat? No. Are you aware in... This past Shabbat, Shabbat I was away. Was, I was away was in West Hartford with Lenny Margulis. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to be here this Shabbat, you're welcome to uh, come to us if you want to. Thank you. Uh, there's a Pasuk in 22.19. which the Ramban discusses in Tap Lamed Dal. But, um, okay, Exodus 22.19, if you want to do it. 19 or 17? I'm sorry. Yeah, 22. 22.19. 22, 22, oh, yes, bring offering to Elohim. One who... How do you translate it? One who brings offering to the Elohim. Yes. The Elohim. Yeah. Shall be destroyed only to Hashem alone. Hello. Okay. So obviously it's a very, very difficult pasuk, right? Because we usually say Elohim is God himself. Right. So most people, other than the Ramban, we'll see what the Ramban does. Most people <coughs> translate this sentence to say to other gods. Which are also called Eloye Lecha Elohim Acheri Malpanai. The second of the Aseret that Deep wrote calls <clears throat> idols other gods Elohim Acheri, right? Yecharam <laughs> shall be destroyed. So the problem is, according to the Ramban, I'm just giving a, an intro. The problem is, according to the Ramban, if you say that this is the mitzvah now in the middle of Mishpatim, that he who worships idol other idols other gods shall be destroyed. We don't know that yet. It's a little strange because in the Aseret that he wrote, Lo panai, because I will uh, remind, remember the person who, uh, who uh, you know, deviates from my covenant and uh, goes to other gods, right? That's for sure. So other people say, well, yeah, it's true that the Aseret that he wrote has already said it, but here for the first time is mentioned the punishment. Elohim, he who sacrificed to, to other gods, Yecharam shall be destroyed, which is a strange word, Yecharam, by the way. Usually you say Yumat, right? Yamut in the Hebrew uh, of the Chumash in general. So they say, yeah, here is the first time that the Torah elaborates the actual punishment for the crime, for the crime. So the Ramban says, well, that's a little strange that it should come here. And why would you mention Zobeach? Why would you mention sacrifice to the Torah in Nasirat that he brought, Lo you know, or Lo don't bow down to, don't uh, believe in, don't uh, follow other gods, right? But Zoveach, you mean just sacrificing to other gods is mentioned here as a particular thing? To the Ramban things, it's all very strange. So if you look at the Ramban, in this Pasuk, I think it's a, a blockbuster of a Ramban, and it's fundamental, I think, in Jewish religion. You have to do it. Excuse me. You have to do it. 
I don't think so. <laughs> tough, tough, tough. What did I say? Chabed uh, Tet. Tough. Yeah, Chabed, Chabed, huge Tet. Okay. All right. So you, you got it. Yes, sir. Okay. So La Avodah Zarah, who Nakud Patach. Right. It's other. Some people say we're talking about Avodah Zarah. That's what this tor- this mention, this tor- pasuk is mentioned, where it says Elohim. Klomar le otana Elohim she is hartem she is hartem alehem be makor acher zeu lashon Rashi. You notice by the way it says la Elohim. It doesn't say le Elohim to gods, but la Elohim to that. La is usually means that particular one le ha. Do you understand this grammatical yes, idea? Yes. Yes. yes so in Hebrew la Elohim. So it says la Elohim. You notice if you look at the text. You know, when you write in the Torah script, it doesn't give you vowels. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, oh, no, so the way to pronounce the way Western to Papua pronounce how could we know that? <laughs> that's a good question. So, the way to pronounce words is a tradition that goes back to the time the Torah was given. Mm-hmm. I mean, we all know these pronunciations, right? We were it was given over that way, right? Because mm-hmm. otherwise, you wouldn't really know. Many words, most words, are, are a little bit enigmatic, right? When is a ah? When is a uh? When is a eh? <laughs> Okay, Zoel Latzoveach La Elohim Yecheram. You're a Balkori, right? Twenty-two, nineteen. La Elohim. Well, it's a it's a kamat. Yeah, La Elohim Yecheram. Yocharam. Sorry, Yocharam. You notice there's a there are two. Oh, you don't have a Bible here. Yeah, with Patah. Mishpatim. Seri. Seri. 22, 19. Yeah. So there. La Elohim Yacharam. Right there. Top. Top two lines where my thumb is. Yeah. See it? Mm-hmm. La Elohim. Are you going to lean this Shabbat? Mm-hmm. Okay, it's La Elohim. So, in order to say that this La is a particular God, pointing to a particular one, Rashi says, that one, those gods which I told you about in Aserah that he wrote, that you shouldn't worship other than me, other than God, that's what I'm telling you about now, that a person who sacrifices to those gods, La Elohim, would be destroyed. Okay? That's Rashi. Right. Good. Mm-hmm. Per Ebenezer, Piresh. שאל דרך חפשת איננו מדבר לישראל שכבר הזהיר על עבודה זרה בדיבור שני So he, the Ebenezer says something very weird, right? This pasuk is not even talking about the Jewish people, right? Because the Jewish people were already commanded at a seret that he brought not to worship other gods. Mm-hmm. So who is he talking to? רק בעבור הגר הכתוב אחריו Because in this Torah, right here, הזווח לאלוהים יחרם You have the Bible? Mm-hmm. 19 Right? Vigir, lo tone, a proselyte. You must not oppress or fool or, or pressure him, right? Lotil Khatsenu Kigari me ten Eric Mitzrayim. See that? So the Ebenezer says in the context, one Pasuk after the other, we're saying to the Gerim, you who once were idol worshippers, and now you changed your ways, and you have joined the Jewish people and you are a gay or you are a proselyte. You have a special mitzvah to remind you that anybody who sacrifices to those gods that you once had would be destroyed. And then it takes to, talks to the Jewish people that your approach to the proselyte should be with sensitivity and with not pressure and, and, and to be nice to them, right? So well, that's you, also a little you'll, weird. You'll be destroyed. And destroyed. Then, and then but, then we, but we have to be very nice to you. Yeah. Right, I mean, <laughs> so long as you don't. Yeah. Right. Obviously, it's an odd Right. placement of those two psukim, first warning them and then telling everybody else to be nice to them. Right. right. This is the condition by which anybody could live in our land, and that is that he not sacrifice to other gods, kasher hayao said, like he used to do. Right. So this is not only a proselyte, but even a ger toshat, a stranger who comes to the land of Israel, who is not Jewish must not worship other gods in the land of Israel, right? right. There's no freedom of religion as far as that goes. It's, very, it's actually quite interesting, right? Because it's one of the commandments of human beings 
Shiva mitzvah b'nei Noach. The Noachite laws includes not to sacrifice, not to worship other gods. Correct? And all the terrible things that it leads to in society. So, so even a non-Jew is prohibited from doing that. Okay? Okay, and that's what, according to the Ibn Ezra, that's what this pasuk is, because it's not required to tell the Jews that. They already know it from Aserot Adibra. Vehebel... What does Yochoram mean? Yochoram. From Cherem, from the idea of Cherem. Well, the, it, it, they translate it as destroy, as made null and void. Uh, it, it is a strange way to talk, correct. So you'll see in a moment. I mean, it, the, all of this bothers the Rabban, because to the others, this is, right... And he says here, Behevel Yivtse Pihu, which is really quite a uh, strong piece of language, right? And uh, foolishness or emptiness will open its mouth. He's talking about the Ibn Ezra, mm-hmm. right? This foolishness that he says, Ki Be'aserita Dibrot, he's here, Alavadazara Belav, right? In the Aserita Dibrot, the commandment was given as a do not do, right? The Khan who, who opens the the well, the bear? Hevel. Hevel is a uh, oh. is emptiness or foolishness or falsehood will open its mouth. It's okay. just an expression he's using, right? right. Because in Aserta de Brot, the commandment not to worship other gods was given in a negative commandment. The Khan Mefaresha Onesh. And here it tells you the punishment. The Mishpat Shinasebo and the judgment that would be done to him. Kasher asab below tirzach below tinaf, just like in the Torah in the Sefer Tzibrod it says that you must not murder, right, and that you must not commit adultery. Ki elem heim hameshpatim asher yasim lefnehem. These commandments now the mishpatim, right? We're talking about the pasha mishpatim after the Sefer Tzibrod was given. God then sends Moshe to tell the people enumerate these laws, how the laws will be carried out, right? Among them is the punishment that's given to the person who murders, to the person who commits adultery, to the person who, who, who commits idol worship, right? Correct? Ki And here he commands the person who does these things to be killed. Ki he's trying to explain, is mitat beidin. The idea, the word yacharam, to be destroyed, means to be put to death by the court. The king kol cherem ashe yacharam min adam lo yifadeh motumant. If you remember that a person who is commanded to be killed and executed shall not redeem himself, shall not, uh, uh, you know, you don't accept money instead of his life. And the um, and the animal that's put to death, sixty nine. Where is this? Vayikra chavzayin. Vayikra chavzayin chavtet, which is that pasuk. I want to see what he's referring to. Chavzayin, Chavtet, Kol Cherem Kotshes Rumi. Kol Cherem Asher Yecharam Min Adam Lo Yipadeh Mot Yumat. Oh, this is a a uh, hmm. any any uh, sacrifice that a person uh, commits to come to the uh, to the altar. It cannot be bought out, but is going to be sacrificed. 27, yeah, 29. Yeah, 27, 29. Okay, so he's saying that it's not a strange word to use. Yacharam means to actually be put to death, okay? Ki inyan v'yitem cherem kamahu. Later on it said, when you go into the field and you are in battle and you will conquer, let's say, Yericho, you must not take anything from there for yourself because you will be cherem like it. Means that you will be destroyed like it. Shekets de kesenotayet tatanen ki cherem hu. Okay. V'yitachem. Yericho is related to cherem? Yeah, everything in it you are not allowed to take. Remember uh, there was one man who who violated that commandment? Uh-huh. Achan took something for himself. So they were not allowed to. Okay, ve'yitachem. Ki yichlola katuv hazoveach kam hazebach she'akol yiyeh l'cherem l'irmoz shehu asur v'ana'ah. 
והזכירה כתוב, זמיחה אבו הדין לאשתה חוויה לכל עבודת פנים. The sacrifice is mentioned in an altar because we should know that everything that's on the altar is not permitted to take for yourself. Okay, and then it says, why do we talk about zvicha on an altar? It really applies to everything, like bowing down and all other ways of worshipping, not only zoveach, not only sacrificing too, right? Which makes this pasuk a little strange because why does the Torah just mention that alone? Right? אבל שאר עבודות כגון המכבד ומרבץ ומגדי ומגפף והמנשה כאינו במיטה שלא כדרכה ושלא כדרכה. All right. It so happens that if you, if there's a certain God that you worship by kissing the, the idol, and there's a different God that you worship by bowing on the floor. So then the halacha happens to be that you're not allowed to go on the floor to the one that's supposed to be kissed, either. Mm-hmm. And you're not allowed to kiss the one that you're supposed to prostrate to. But you only get killed as a punishment by the court if you do the worshipping the way that is worshipped. Mm-hmm. Kissing that one, you get killed. Prostrating this one, you get killed. If you prostrate to that one, you are violating the law, but you, are, but you don't get killed. So, okay. אבל כדרך עבודה בכל עניין הוא מחייב אפילו יש פה ער עצמו לפעור, לפעור. אוקיי, ונכון. Now, that's the one, and it, it seems to me correct. Do you see where we are now? We are pinky, six lines from the bottom. What's the big word? הנכון. Four lines before the end of the line. Yeah. The truth, the correct way, do you see it? Yeah? Yes. The correct way in this word, La Elohim, בתח בפתחות, with the A, right? הלמד שהם מלאכי מעלה. This teaches us that we're not talking about gods. We're talking about angels, celestial beings we're talking about now, right? And you remember we saw earlier in the Torah where it said בני אלוהים, you know, and so on and so on. ואני קראו אלוהים בהרבה מקומות. They are called Elohim, these celestial beings that are gods, Creatures, yes, we're talking about, are mentioned as called Elohim in many places. Kakatuv in kamocha by Elohim Hashem. What do we mean by that? There is none like you among the Elohim, God. God, you are greater than all the other Elohim. You mean he's greater than uh, Zoroaster? He's greater than uh, Buddha? That's silly, mm-hmm. right? So the saying, no, God is supreme. He has servants under him, God does. Michael, Gabriel, whatever, even the son, right? He, so you might think that one of them is also great. So we say, yes, they are great. But God, you are greater than all the Elohim. All those messengers, all those servants of yours are really servants of yours. You're greater than them, right? So that's the way to translate that Elohim. You are greater than all the powerful ones. Yeah, who Elohei ha Elohim va Adonai Adonim? Who God? God is the God of all the other Elohim's and the master of all the other masters. Hishtachavu lo kol Elohim. All the other so-called Elohim bow down to him. Vayikru gam Elim. They're called also Elim. Mi kamocha ba Elim Hashem. Right? Okay. Kasher is kartikvar. Ve'amar. So now we're talking about something completely different, right? He's going to explain. We're not talking about worship the other gods. Let's assume, let's assume that the Torah already told us about idol worship. We're not talking like Avarashi, and we're not talking like the Ibn Ezra, and we're not even talking about the Ramban himself who purposely said the possibility that here it enumerates the punishment. And that's why it's mentioned here. Okay? All those three answers are rejected for the moment, right? Rashi says... Right? That this is a repetition of what was said before. The Avanerzo said this is mentioned to the Ger, not to the Jews. And the Ramban had said before that Yaharam, the punishment is being enumerated here. That's why it's mentioned here. Three possibilities. It's going to a fourth. What's the fourth? This La Elohim is not that you should not worship other gods, idol worshipping, right? But that you should not worship one of God's 
ministers, one of God's servants, one of God's powerful ones, because he is only to him. And what do you mean by that? Bilti Hashem Levado, the only one that you do sacrifice to is Hashem Levado, Yud Kei Vavke. You notice? Bilti Hashem Levado in the Pasuk is Yud Kei Vavke. The name, huh? The Pasuk. Our Pasuk. Okay. Yes. So, Vayach Lavim Yechram Bilti La Hashem. Yud Kei Vavke Levado. Only to him. Yes. Right? So he says only that one. Bavur. Because. When, when somebody comes and sacrifices, let's say to Michael, mm -hmm. or to Gabriel, or to Raphael, you know what? Raphael's in charge of giving healing to the sick. Right? Mm -hmm. Hashem sends him to bring to the sick. So why don't I pray to okay. Raphael to bring the healing, that he should bring the healing, right? They think, actually, that they're doing God's will. God appointed him as the great healer, you know, to send healing to people. So God probably wants me to honor Raphael. He's the one who appointed him, right? If a king appoints a great general, people bow down to the general because uh, he's the representative of the king. So when you, when you sacrifice to this... To this uh, Raphael, you might think that you're doing God's will. She you him emtsaim that they should be the intermediary. This is a good word, emtsai, right? Mm -hmm. The intermediary to bring them ratzon to uh, invoke their goodwill from God, mm -hmm. and it's like it's like those who sacrifice to the God and His servants. What's wrong with that? Al Cain, therefore, the Torah says, Amar is bilti Lashem Levado, only to Yud Kevav Kei, who is not any one of the ministers, but the God Himself. And He says, Yesh Khan Od Bedere Chazes Sodom. So, first of all, He establishes there's no intermediary. You are forbidden this Pasuk. You are forbidden to really approach an intermediary. From, from Jacob. Yeah, but right. that's not the Torah. Right? We're talking about now commandments, right? You were right. Yeah. Jacob, in, how he do asked, you know? How do you know? He asked, what's your name? In order to maybe later, like when I well, call yeah, it, Pinky, that's, Pinky got a very good friend of Hashem. So. That's the Nitziv. <laughs> that's the Nitziv. That's a, I mean, you remember, it's a very special Nitziv. One of the uh, Mepharshim says that he asked him his name, so the, so the angel gets angry at him, and he says, why are you asking my name? Uh, listen, if I meet you in a party... And you say, and somebody introduces us, right? So you ask me my name. I say, my name is Yehuda Eliezer. And what's yours? Right? You wouldn't get angry at me and saying, what are, you, what are you asking me my name for? So people ask that question. What's this exchange? Why is, the, why is this man, so to speak, man, right? So if you use the explanation, but this man is actually a malach, right? So then it would be like, I meet you at a party, and I ask you for your card. Pinky, oh, what do you do? You're an accountant? Oh, okay. I, uh, I'd, I'd love to remember you and how to contact you. One day I may need an accounting question, so I'll look you up, right? I mean, in networking, in parties, right? So this Malach is getting upset with him because, don't you remember? You are directly connected to God, right? God spoke to you on the, at the ladder when you had the Chalom, when you were running away from Esau. Did you speak to any angels or did God speak to you? God spoke to you. You saw the angels going up and down and up and down. And God himself spoke to you and promised. So you want a card from a, from a underling like me? You're asking me my name? You're not getting the point, right? You speak to God yourself directly. So it's, it's an old point, right? So no intermediaries. According to that, this is the pasuk that we're talking about here. Azoveach la Elohim. A person who sacrifices and thinks that he's doing the right thing, sacrificing to one of the intermediaries of God, because he thinks that's the way to do, to bring God's will into the world, is to speak to the intermediaries. Why is, why is, that's a terrible thing. Why is um, uh, Abraham <coughs> about to, about to um, check the Yitzvah, and Mawach tells him, um, stop, stop, Abraham. Why does he stop? Why does he stop? Who, who, I mean, who, who, who are you? 
very good question. Yeah, that was a very good question, because the order he received from, was from Hashem directly. Mm -hmm. So, what is he stopping because the angel is, is People saying... People ask the question, I don't remember the answers they give, you're right. Mm -hmm. He's obeying, he's obeying. The, the did, did the Malach speak all the way? Or yes. he stops, it's true. Yes. Yeah, but we're in Vayera, we're in... Uh, we're in Vayera, yeah. yeah. So, all right? We're in Vayera, yeah. And it says, Vayakarlav Malach Hashem Min Hashemayim. Vayomer Ram 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 Vayomer Nei. Vayomer Al Tishlach Elohim Menar. Ki Ata Yadati Elohim Ata. Yeah. Yeah. And the, and the Malach again speaks to him from heaven and says, I swear in the name of God, mm -hmm. because you have done this, I will bless you and your children after you, and so on and so on. Yeah, it's a good question. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. But it's a good question why he could answer. Mm. Oh, you're talking about, well, they didn't... Uh, that's not as serious as uh, this. Yeah, I mean, to listen to, listen to, an inter to listen to a messenger who tells you what's going to happen is not the same as worshipping him, right? I mean, right. It's not about worshipping, davening to him, praying to them. Hashem told him to sacrifice his son, and then Malach says, Stop. Stop. <laughs> okay, good question. Okay, now he says, now he says there's a very big uh, secret here. Yesh bekan od b'derech hazeh so damok. There's a great secret in the next paragraph, right? Yes, sir. Yuvan menu inyana korbanot. You might have asked. He's obviously leading in a direction that bothered us as well. Why does the Pasuk talk about sacrifice? Mm. Right? So he tried to answer before. He says, you know, the punishment is being described. It mentions sacrifice because the sacrifice is also cherem. Once you put something on the sacrifice, then the word cherem applies to sacrifice. So they use the word sacrifice. And also, the truth is that you would be just as guilty if you sacrificed or bowed down or kissed or whatever that was appropriate for that God. Remember, he mentioned it before. But it's been bothering us all along. When the Torah says, Lo Elohim acharim al panai. Lo Don't bow down to him. That's enough. I mean, we already know not to worship other gods. We have to say, don't sacrifice to other gods. You'll be punished. Why sacrifice, right? So, one answer we gave was, the sacrificing is a form of prayer, right? You, you don't pray in those days. The way you pray is you sacrifice and you pray over the, over the offering. So he has said, that we're not allowed to sacrifice and pray to an intermediary, right? Now he's going to say something. We have four answers so far to this pasuk, right? Mm -hmm. Got it? Four answers? Yes. Rashi, Ibn Ezra, Iramban's punishment issue, and the intermediate issue. Mm -hmm. Four. Yes. Comes a fifth now. And he's going to say, this is going to bring us into the secret of sacrifices in general. Worship, worshiping through a sacrifice. And he's going to tell you that this La Elohim is not angels anymore. It's not intermediaries anymore. This is a fifth version. What's the fifth version? Yesh is a great secret. Yuvan Mimenu Inyana Korbanot. We will, with, with the secret, we will understand the secret of sacrifices. Veyachol Hamaskil Ladato. And the one who understands will be able to know it from what we wrote in another place. We have to find out where that is. <laughs> and Unculus has actually uh, hinted at it in this place. And we will also hint about it in Torah Kohanim, in Vayikra, Bezrat Hashem, Yitbarach, Shemo, La'ad, V'lanetzach. So obviously he's telling you there's a great secret. I'm not telling you all of it right now. But if you look at another place where I will be talking about it, you will see it. So Unculus, who has Unculus? I bet you don't. You don't. 
Or you have on clothes? I think I was freezing. Oh, you had the eagle? Ah. No, that's that's the answer. That's the business of intermediaries. One fifteen. Where is Uncle's? Has hinted it. Uncle's hinted at it here. No footnote. No. Ah. But it doesn't matter. We have a if we have a chumash anywhere here, you'll be able to see Uncle's. But the place where the Ramban says he talks about it, if you look at footnote seventy eight there on top. So footnote 78 tells you that you should look in Parshat Shmot, Divrei Amasko Pein Yifka Enu. And E-I-N, Vayikra, let's not go to that one first, Vayikra Aleph Tet. Okay? That is the first chapter in Vayikra, Pasuk Tet. So in the Ramban, On our pasuk twenty two, Shmot twenty two uh, nineteen. No, so very twenty two nineteen. Twenty two. Yeah, nineteen. Yeah. Yeah. So what? How does Uncle's translated? Only in the name of only to the name of God. I don't think I don't think, I don't see how that helps us. But he says here anyway to look at Leviticus, num, chapter one, verse verse what nine, yeah. Offering, right? They're, they're by the, if you want the Hebrew words to that pasuk, it's says Vayikra Aleph Tet. You see how you say Vayikra Aleph Tet? You have it. So it says um, Tet. Ishei Reach Nichoach Lashem. Right, a uh, favoring uh, sent to God. Right. Yud Kei Vav Kei. So here it goes like this. A burnt offering, each on an intention shall be burnt offering. When you slaughter, you slaughter with the intention of burning. Now, which is one second. Now the time to explain the things you should slaughter with the intention of placing on the flames. Burning wood. And he needs to have it in his fire should be. I'm, I'm just going on and on because there are some tech, some some details he's talking about wood fire burning, namely that they are fire you know, blazing all eternal. Uh, the reason why there's been some kind of some no, there he talks about this great this great um, terrible machloket he has with the Rambam. Remember, but these. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Noah, who keeps going. It is far more fitting to accept the reason for their own group. Scholars say, namely, that the seeing lines they are accomplished through the thought to speak to God and one command of men. Since Rabbi, we should lay his hands upon them, and we should confess them, mm -hmm. we should burn, mm -hmm. we should sprinkle, mm -hmm. took from him a substitute of ransom. Okay. By, by way of the truth. 
Ah, okay, by way of the truth. Do you see Derech uh, uh, Ha'emet? Oh, you don't have it. You don't have the Ramban. You ready? By way of the truth, now Derech Ha'emet, this is usually the secret uh, things that the Ramban talks about, about the Korbanot in Vayikra, when a person brings a sacrifice, he says, Reach Nichoach Lashem, Yudke Babke. You remember this pasuk here is no sacrifice to Elohim, only to Hashem, Yud Kevavke, only, exclusively. So he says this fifth secret, he's saying, is like this. By way of the truth, the mystical teachings of the Kabbalah, there is a hidden secret contained in the Korbanot, which he just now told you, I'm going to tell you there, right? You may be introduced to it by that which our rabbis have said in the Sifri, in one of the commentaries on the Torah, and at the end of the tractate of Menachot, Shimon ben Azai said, Come and see what is written in the section of the korbanot, of the offerings. It does not say, with reference to them, El, God, nor Elohim, or Elohecha, nor Elohim, nor Shaddai, nor Tzvaot, None of those words relating to God are mentioned in Vayikra when it talks about Korbanot, but only Yudke Vavke, the proper name of God, the Eternal. In order not to give the believer in plurality, mm -hmm. the people who think that there's uh, more than one God or Trinity or whatever, to give them the occasion for a point of attack. Because if you say, you know, when you bring an altar, you sacrifice to Elohim, they might think, oh, there's Elohim, and there's Yudke Vavke, there are different gods, but you mention only one name, Yudke Vavke, right? Perhaps you might say that he is in need of food, right? Scriptures, therefore, say, if I was hungry, would I not, would I tell you? For the world is mine and the fullness thereof. I have only commanded you to bring offerings in order that my will should be said and fulfilled, that you should be commanded by me. In the beginning of Torah Kohanim, we also find Rabbi, Yisrael, Rabbi Yossi said, whenever an offering is mentioned by scripture, the yud ke vav ke word is used. In order not to give the opportunity for heretics to rebel by finding pluralistic allusions to the same principle of the unity. These are the words of the rabbis. Now, he wants to explain it, what he thinks this means. Now it is true that in the sections of the Torah where the offerings are commanded, it does not say El or Elohim, but we do find elsewhere in scriptures verses as follows, and you shall offer burnt offerings thereon unto the eternal Elohecha. There is, there are exceptions. Uh, da, 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 he brings a few examples. Da, 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 but, the whole subject is explained in the Torah itself. As it is said, my offering, and it is said, the food of meaning, that the offerings are, one second, one second, The slaughtering of the offerings must be to the name of the Eternal One Himself, meaning that he who slaughters a sacrifice must have no intention to do anything else in the world save unto the name of the Eternal only. This being the meaning, the meaning of the expression Olahu, this is an Olah, to Yudke Vavke. That's why the verse said, the fire offering of the eternal. Da, 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 da. For the offering of their God, their, this is very complex in the, in the words, I'm just trying to, yeah. And he who performs the acts of offering should have no other intention other than to the Yudke Vavke. unto the eternal, unto him who created the world. Uh, 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 uh. 
He's going to explain. Hey, this is not the place he explains it as well. Maybe it is in Shemot also. Oh, what does he say? He, he, he explains elsewhere. I mean, otherwise we're going to have to sit. I just went through five pages and it didn't go all the way. He, he's trying to say that the Gemara does explain that in Vayikra, almost nowhere does it say any other name with sacrifices other than Yudke Vavke. And he says, our pasuk here of Zoveach la Elohim, Yecheram, he who sacrifices to Elohim, is meaning to say this. Sometimes a person will feel that he is guilty of something. And he feels that God is angry at him. We're not talking about intermediaries here. The fifth, this is the fifth answer. Thinks that God is angry at him. Or he knows that uh, you know God is the one who has mercy upon his creatures. And I am now suffering. So let me bring a sacrifice. And my intention is to bring the sacrifice to the God who is the judge so that I may get him to look at me more favorably instead of to judge me. Let me sacrifice to God who is the merciful one so that he will exercise his mercy towards me. Let me, what other, what other, God is the one who gives generosity, is the well, chesed, so let me sacrifice to the God's attribute of chesed so that he will bring me generosity so I can get a job. Right? Or whatever. Right? I mean, these kinds of things. Which sounds very natural, no? So he says, the secret of sacrifices, the secrets of speaking to God, of worshipping God, that he's going to say, which is a secret, he says, that people should understand, and that this pasuk is trying to tell us, is hazoveach la Elohim. If a person sacrifices, directing his prayer and directing his worship towards one of the aspects of God, not an intermediate, one of the attributes, one of the characteristics of God that we imagine in ourselves, right? That's what we do. Mahu elahu, mahu rahu matafarahu, mahu, you know, malbisharumi mafata malbisharumi. If you want to approach God in one of his attributes, depending on what you need at the time, that is a terrible thing to do. What are you supposed to do if you have a great need? You're supposed to say, I am worshiping God who is the creator of the world, who is the unity, the unity of all attributes, and I have no intention to manipulate or to approach one of the aspects. God, don't pay attention to judgment right now. Pay attention to mercy right now. You know what I mean? God is the, is the combination of all the attributes, and if one person prays to, directed his attention to one of the attributes of God, that's a prohibition. That's a secret of sacrifices. Yeah, but you, can hope, you can hope that uh, God will look favorably upon one thing or another, but to, to tefillah, our tefillah is, is, uh, our tefillah is like the sacrifices, right? So he says when a person stands before God, he worships God, the Almighty. But why, 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 Hannah, why Hannah is, is directing his prayers, her Who? prayers, Who? Hannah, Hannah, her prayers to Hashem, no Hashem, but uh, she said, I don't know, it's about. I don't know what she says. You know, yeah, you remember the words she uses? Yeah, she uses about. Do you, do you, Once can we you find the text? That. Can yeah. we find the text? It's, it's in Shmuel. Shmuel yeah. It's in Shmuel something. Yeah. It's very curious because... Uh, so it's in Shmuel, it's up high. So we have to look it up. I mean, the Ramban is... You, you, there, you may have many examples in which a person seems to do otherwise, but he's saying, as means that, that a person... What's my job when I worship God? My job when I worship God is to, is to approach him as the... Let's say he doesn't do what I need, right? Or he does judge me. Or he... I mean, is... Is, is my own parochial need or attitude important enough to make my 
If, if you were aware who you were standing before, if you were aware who you were standing before, the Almighty God who created the entire universe, who has everything in mind, who has all the attributes who you cannot even describe, you probably wouldn't quite dare to say, you know, I need a job. Right? I mean, it, yeah, I'm he's taking care see, of the galaxies right now. I mean, see, uh, he has to, he has to worry uh, about my job. I mean, yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he, he, he will do, he will do what he thinks is right. He will do what he you should do what's right in your mind to bring greater glory to you. If I happen to work into the process of bringing greater, greater glory to you, then I will fit in. You know, that's very nice. As soon as you don't need, need me anymore, then I don't count for anything. As long as you need me, I'm here, right? I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a different approach to, than to think of God as the place to which you go to, to, to press a button to bring out a piece of food, like a mouse who's trained to go to, his, to the machine. You know, if you give a certain point, you, then you'll get a cookie, right? And if you go to that point, then you'll get somebody to pet you. And if you go over here, you'll get some food. And if you go over here, you'll make sure that he doesn't get angry at you. You know what I mean? It's a... To, to the Ramban, that's making a Vodazara out of your worship of God. I mean, so that's pretty radical. to me to call him Hashem... Uh, uh, the Merciful. Uh, he wouldn't say that's right. Or, or I call him... Uh, Hashem El, 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 El Rafa, for example. Wouldn't want to see that. So how can we, uh, this man has been a little bracha, so... Yeah. Yeah, what, what would the Ramban say about Shmon Esrei, where you say, Baruch Atah Hashem, Rofei Cholei Amor Yisrael. Baruch Atah Hashem, Yud Kei Bab Kei, Rofei Cholei Amor Yisrael. Uh... You know, we introduce it, of course, in our first paragraph of Bishman Esri, we declare, we declare that everything we're going to ask for is somehow in the middle, but we declare in the beginning, right? You are the God of my father, Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. You are El Agadol Agibor Vahnora. Right? Hashem. You can do it, right? Hakel, the master of, that is great. Go to the ground. El Elyon, greater than all, right? And so on and so on. Gomel Chasadim Tovim, you do good things. And then we ask for things, it's true. So I don't think he rejects the idea of asking for things, but the approach should be, you are everything. You, I'm approaching you as the attribute of everything, the unity of God. And if it happens to be that I could fit into that and you will heal me, that's very good. That fit with uh, Chana. That's what he... Yeah, remember, according to many people say that Chana approach to God was, listen, I mean, what I want is that my child should serve you in the Mishkan, right? I mean, I'm going to give him to God. So all I want is for you, God. I mean, I, I'm not... Asking to satisfy my need to be a mother, because I'm going to give him up to you. Well, so, so she's, she's. It sounds like bribery, yes, but uh, she yes. actually didn't. <laughs> After he was weaned, she saw him once a year, and she came. She came to uh, Ailey and she brought him a coat to put on, mm -hmm. a little bit bigger than the coat he had last year as he was growing up. That's what she would do. She'd see him once a year. But, but first, first of all, from the beginning, she weaned him, right? Yeah, she had him. She had him, she had him until he was weaned. I don't know if he was three years old or whatever. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's something. That's that is certainly something. That's action of the motherly whatever. Um, yeah, and then whatever to that coat thing is also something. She saw. She got nachas seeing him grow. Right. Yeah, you know the story with the coat, no? No, you don't know the story of the coat. The story of the coat is very strange. It's a good story. I mean, I, w I was given, when my father, my mother died, and my mother passed away. So Rev Schlesinger, you know, in the community, came to visit me to Menachem Abel because he knew my parents a little bit. They used to dive in his shoe. My father used to go there when he was in Newhouse's house, you know, right down on Carlton. There was a minion there. So he came to be Menachem Abel. It was very sweet, very nice for him to come to see me, goodness. 
So uh, he sat down with me. He said, I want to tell you a story. He told me the story about Chana and Shmuel and the coat. He says like this. He says, you, you don't realize what um, uh, internal permanent effects a mother has on you, on a child. He says, let me tell you a story. He says, when Shaul HaMelech was just about preparing for this final battle with the Plishtim, remember he became very afraid because he knew that God had abandoned him mm. and he knew that he was going to face a terrible, terrible battle mm. and he felt like he felt like he needed some help. He felt the disaster was about to strike. So, if you remember, Shaul was actually like a child, like a son to Shmuel. And Shmuel had already died. Shmuel was the mm. one who anointed him, you know, mm. and he was very, very close to him. He was his mentor. Even though, later on, of course, Shmuel was commanded by God to reject the kingdom of Shaul and to give it to David. And he, they say, Shmuel cried all night before, you know, before God that he should try to forgive him and he was not going to be given away, right? But Shmuel was very, very close. He was mm. like a child to him. And Shaul felt that way himself. Now he felt abandoned. There's nobody here. I, and Shmuel is dead. So he goes to the house of a witch mm -hmm. who is uh, yeah, a medium who knew how to call up the dead, right? Mm -hmm. So he comes to her and he says, I want you to help me uh, call up someone. So she is frightened silly because Shaul had before commanded that any witch shall be killed according to the way the Torah, you know, all of these people are blasphemers and God. So she says, I, I, I'm not a witch, I don't, do, I don't know anything. He says, listen, you are protected, I'm not going to do anything to you, I need your help. Which is strange, right? Going to the Ramban, this proves that there is such a thing as magic. The reason it's forbidden is because it causes great harm, and you're not supposed to use magic, you're supposed to be directly working with God. According to the Rambam, it's all foolishness anyway. But here, obviously, Shaul believes that she can help him. Mm -hmm. And so she believes him. You're going to swear to me? You're not going to hurt me? So he swears to her. Right? So then she goes into a trance and she mumbles and who knows what else, some incense and uh, suddenly she cries out. And Shaul is standing there and she says, what, what, what? What did you, what do you see? She says, I see an old man in a coat. He says, that's Shmuel. Yeah, suppose. That's Shmuel. And he speaks to Shmuel. Mm -hmm. What can I do? Da, 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 da. Anyway, that's not important. But the important thing is, what is this man? She says she sees an old man in a coat. There are a lot of old men in coats. Mm -hmm. What's this old man in a coat? Well, how does Shaul know that he sees an old man in a coat? Who, did that, who does that mean? He says, that is the coat that everybody knew. That was the coat that his mother gave him. He's an old man and dying, had died, right? Mm -hmm. He wore the coat that his mother had given him throughout his lifetime, mm -hmm. right? She would come every year, she would visit him, and according to the Gemara, she would bring him a coat, and this coat grew with him, or maybe she gave him a new size coat every year, until, you know, she was gone already, but he was an adult. Mm -hmm. I don't know when she died exactly, how old he was. I don't think it's mentioned, but... Uh, so this is the man in the coat. So he was trying to tell me, you know, you think, and you might, might not be aware, but you are the man that your mother input. You know, you, you're wearing the coat of your mother. He had already, Everybody, you're the he had already the coat of your mother. Up. They caught his coat before he, before his head. Remember? Yeah, yeah, he, he tore his coat, coat. Remember? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Remember, he took, took his coat and pulled on it. Shaul, when Shmuel was going away from him, had rejected him. So he grabbed his coat and it tore. And he says, oh, that's a symbol of your mamlachut, your kingdom that's going to be torn from you. So this coat, maybe, she didn't say, I see a man with a torn coat, but I guess yeah. <laughs> maybe he sewed it up. I don't know. But, or maybe he just left it that way. It, it, it's actually very interesting irony. You know, an avail, a mourner, tears his coat. Mm -hmm. Here, Shaul tore it, but it's very well possible that Shmuel shared the same feeling, right? That he was mourning about the fact that he had to tear the kingdom away from Shaul, so it's like mm -hmm. mourning over a son. Yes. Uh, the irony of it is amazing, right? He didn't tear it, but it was torn for him, and it's part of his mourning. So anyway, so I mean, this is this is the uh, the Ramban's idea about Zoveach Elohim. Mm -hmm. uh, why do I mention that? Yeah, that, uh, yeah, that 
רק בלבד להשם לבדו, right? יוד קי וו קי, all the midot as one. That's the way we approach worship. In other words, prayer is worship, he says, right? Worship means, I worship you, God, right? You made me, you made the world, you want me to worship you, and I'm here to worship you. And not... Worship means... And it's possible, worship to means to do... Say to give, to give everything to you. To him and come again, chat with him. Y yes, only but also to give everything to you. Is. Worship means pretty worship is proposal here to I put myself entirely in your service, mm -hmm. right? Unlike uh, bakashot, bakashot are sort of secondary in a way. But I think most people think of prayer as a way of beseeching God for something. Mm -hmm. how, uh, how we get into that feeling. Once in a while you get this feeling. No, you walk around in a beautiful day, you see a great scenery, you... You, you see a grandchild born, you, uh, you know, so you, you, you get ex inspired to, to do uh, this uh, worship feeling. But, uh, but most of the time... What? <laughs> like I feel, I feel the DNA in my cells just divided into us two cells. Worship God. You know what I mean? No. Uh, I mean, no. I'm saying, if we if we tune in to to the nature of the universe and what God wants and what God created, then worshiping God is much more natural than asking for something, right? I mean, because I've already been given, and I'm being given every second life by God in order to serve Him, right? So if I was to expire right now at this table and you carry me out, you know, to Hebrew Kadisha, that would be okay. Because I've... Uh, I, I, I suppose I've done my job. I suppose I, I hope so I won't get So anyway, if I say, uh, the friend from my family, so I I'm praying that Hashem heals. Heal the sick of this of this of our people. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> right. I don't love is righteousness. Why 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 are we And judgment both, well, yeah. Right. Why and, are we why are we going away from this? The plain understanding of that, uh, um, the same something something the rabbi is saying um, that it's the uh, I'm pl I'm praying to the one who in, in whom is embedded yeah. everything, oh. <laughs> you know, whatever, 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 whatever it is that he's saying. Um, I guess he would he would put into context. Uh, You've heard this from uh, the rabbi is re reading this book on Shabbat morning, right? So every once in a while he mentions this, that that when one is praying and asking for something, it should be in the context of what is good for the being, bringing of the greater glory of God in the world. That's what I'm asking for, right? right? Not asking because I want to get away from this cancer of mine, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm asking that if it fits in with your will, that there should be more honor to you in the world and that I can contribute something, then, then it would be nice if I didn't have this cancer so I can bring you more glory. In the context of the big plan that you have, right? It's very hard. I mean, I'm not... Listen, when I, when I speak these words, I'm not uh, preaching. You know what I mean? I, I'm, I'm mentioning uh, how difficult the concept of the Ramban is, obviously. He's, but he, he's, he makes no bones about it. Mm -hmm. That's the fifth. And that's what he calls the secret. Secret of Korbanot, secret of worship. And I hinted it at here and hinted there. He mentions in the beginning of his book that, uh, that he has a few things that he will hint at, but nobody is expected to understand. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if you want to ask questions about it, it would be natural to find it uh, very complex. But like Elohim would be the judge. You want to worship to, to the judge right now because you feel that he's going to punish you? Don't worship that way, right? If you do.
do total repentance for something that you have done wrong, then you would be worshipping God. He will take care of the fact that he won't judge you, right? Because you are now a different person. It's not because you say, God, God, you, the angry God, please don't be angry at me, right? It's not, that's the small way. The, the, Very difficult the to praying is the hammer that the person in, in Sodom was asking Hashem and he heard when someone was was asking, remember? Akata, Akata, with that, that young lady who was uh, lady, being, being tortured. Lady. Yes, and maybe mm -hmm. was, she was she tortured, lady. maybe one of the daughters of uh, Lot. So she's there's a there's a medrash there's a medrash that uh, <laughs> so you're asking a question about a medrash and she's a stomite so I what, I mean she didn't read the Ramban but, I don't but think he he heard he heard her cry he right. heard her pain I mean it right. didn't it didn't she didn't even have to talk to God to, there it's not clear at all that this is a prayer right she is being you you remember right, right. the medrash talks about. They had a they had a commandment in their society that nobody is supposed to feed the hungry or feed a stranger. Yeah, right. We don't want any strangers here. Nobody helps a stranger, right? So there was a man coming through one day, and he had nothing, and uh, and they would abandon him, right? They expected him to die of starvation, and that's what should happen to strangers, like those people who come over the Mexican border. You know what I mean? We should yeah. starve them, don't give them any benefits, and throw them out, right? Mm -hmm. Like uh, like. Uh, like some people in the Republican Party. So, so uh, that's what they expected. And they saw the man was alive tomorrow, and he was alive again the next day, and he was alive again the next day. And it can't be. How come he's still living? Nobody in our society would help such a man, right? So they started spying and looking to see what would happen. So early, early in the morning, or maybe late at night, they saw that Lot's daughter, one of Lot's daughters, would sneak because she had Rachmanut from Abraham's family, right? She had Rachmanut, so she would sneak out some food to him in secret that nobody should see, and she slipped some food to him, and she went down. And now they figured out, oh, that's how he's alive, right? And we're going to do something about this. Mm -hmm. And they caught her, and they put her on a roof or on a square, and they poured honey all over her, mm -hmm. and they waited for the bees to come, it's a stupid story because bees don't bite people because you put honey on them. Mm -hmm. They just eat the honey and they go away. Yeah. But anyway, it was, so she, they started stinging her. And she was screaming in pain. right? And they watched her. It's like ISIS, right? I mean, uh, tortured her to yeah. death. And that's what the Midrash says. Hashem said, Hakitza Akata. Is it, let me go down and see, is it really like she, Hakitza Akata, she meaning Sdom, maybe the city, or Hakitza Akata of that woman, of that girl, uh, is happening? If it is, then I have to destroy them because they have no pity. They are, they are, they're unredeemable, right? So, I mean, but your expression of the Hakatsa Kata, when she was crying in pain, it doesn't mean that she was praying to God. I mean, he, he was looking at the world and uh, watching evil being done to the point of such torturous uh, pain. So, you don't have to put that in the context of a prayer from her. That's enough. God, God looks down and uh, will do justice against evildoers. We hope. Right. We hope. He takes his time sometimes. Mm. He takes his time. I mean, even with regard to Sdom, you always can ask the question, how come now? I mean, you mean they weren't so terrible yesterday? They weren't so terrible five years ago? I mean, how, uh, how long do you wait until Sdom gets and the punishment? The people so that's always... They were, were crying, maybe worse than this... Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, who knows, yeah. who knows? I mean, Nazi Germany goes on for, uh, what, how many years before something right. happens? And... And Egypt, 210 years of mm -hmm. great suffering, right? As a matter of fact, they, they were throwing the babies into the water, and then they stopped doing that later on, right? Mm -hmm. uh, how come uh, God didn't look down at a drowning baby and say, it's time? So I any mean, of these questions are always impossible. for people to do something about evil. And only when we cannot ex 
expect people to do anymore because they are so hopeless that we will step in. Right? Yes. God, God would say, we know, we know what ISIS is doing. Well, human beings are supposed to know how to do away with evil people and how to correct the situation. And instead, they look the other way, they do little things. Assad kills a thousand people with poison gas, and we say, if he does that, we will stop him from doing it. No, we don't stop him from doing it. So what do you want from God? I mean, he gave us, he gave us instructions about how to run this world. We are supposed to do this. How to run this world. Where, where, where are we supposed to be? Uh, that's a good question. But he's smart. I mean... I have a, another question. You, you don't besides, think you don't think that we could you don't think that we could actually send a drone oh. and bomb the house of Assad? Oh, you don't think we can do that tomorrow? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. You don't think we can do it? I don't know. That's right. We pick off a single individual who broadcasts terror radios to America, who lives in Yemen somewhere, and we kill them. Boom. Yeah. We know how to. And we do. Uh, we have killed a few of the officers of ISIS by picking them off. But obviously, it's not, we're not doing enough. Iran buys oil from ISIS. Turkey buys oil from ISIS while it is fighting ISIS. I mean, people for their own money, for their own interests, uh, will do whatever they want to do. Right? Exactly. I just read today that the Nobel Prize Commission is tentatively thinking of a point of giving a prize for science to the head of the nuclear research program in Iran. Well. Uh, after he has declared and said that Iran is progressing in its uh, nuclear arms research uh, every day. Maybe in order to come down these yeah, things. This was, yeah, Diplom yeah. diplomacy. You know, here's yes. a, like Obama. You say, if you be nice to them, then yeah. the thing will be better. Yeah. 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 It's <laughs> gonna be, they're going to be. I just read about that this morning. It's not confirmed. But. Um, 